Welcome to another episode of NBA 2K20 Roster Edits with the Charlotte Hornets, the all-time Charlotte Hornets. The Charlotte Hornets were an expansion franchise in the late 80s. However, they did wind up relocating sometime in the late 90s, and they actually left the city of Charlotte and later became what we now know as the New Orleans Pelicans. Well, after that franchise left Charlotte, Charlotte got an expansion team called the Charlotte Bobcats, and after a few seasons as the Bobcats, they changed their name back to the Charlotte Hornets. So the current Charlotte Hornets are not the original Charlotte Hornets that were there in 1988. Those are the modern day New Orleans Pelicans. Now, this is kind of a similar situation to like the Cleveland Browns in football. The original Cleveland Browns moved to Baltimore and became the Baltimore Ravens, and then a few years later, they got an expansion team and named them the Cleveland Browns. Well, the exception with this is the Charlotte Hornets, however, still claim the records for all players that ever played in Charlotte, more or less, despite them half of their franchise history now being in New Orleans. So, this is what I did the last time I went through the Hornets. I decided, as a purist, I like to segregate Hornets players from Bobcats players. And I know some of you may not agree with that, and that's completely up to you, whether you want to leave your Bobcats players on the all-time Hornets roster. However, I plan on making a Bobcats all-time team with not just the players that are on this roster, but some of the players that may not even be on the game that you have forgotten about that played for the Charlotte Bobcats for the short period that they were in existence. So for roster purposes, I like to keep this strictly the Charlotte Hornets. And that includes anybody that ever downed the uniform as a Hornet. So that could be a current player, or that could be somebody that played on the original 1988 franchise. However, if they played for the Bobcats and solely the Bobcats, I try to omit them from this roster simply because they weren't true Charlotte Hornets. So that's totally up to you if you agree with me. Uh, I, I just enjoy to do this the way I like to do my roster edits. It's kind of like what I do with the Oklahoma City Thunder and the Seattle Supersonics. Even though they're the same franchise, I like to separate the two and play as the Thunder and the Supersonics. So hopefully you agree with me on this and let's just go through the stock roster. As you can see, they got the great Gwen Rice, Eddie Jones, the shooting guard, Kemba Walker, point guard, Larry Johnson, a young Alonzo Mourning, Muggsy Bogues, all five foot three, 144 pounds, Del Curry, Vlade Divac, who I'm very happy to see represented as a Charlotte Hornet on this game finally, Kendall Gill, the great player out of the University of Illinois who was drafted by the Hornets, Baron Davis, who played for the Hornets and was very successful before moving on to the Warriors. Derek Coleman, who came to the team after his success in New Jersey. Gerald Wallace, who's one of those Bobcat players I talked about. Steven Jackson, also one of the Bobcats. P.J. Brown, who came here after the Miami Heat. And David Wesley rounds out the end. So the three that I want to remove, or actually four, excuse me, that I chose to remove are David Wesley at the end, Steven Jackson and Gerald Wallace, and that's only strictly because they're Bobcats players. And this one may come as a surprise, but Eddie Jones, he's the second guy on this roster, and you're like, well, why would you replace him? He's a good player. Well, it's very simple. I like to have guys that play more than at least three years with the franchise. And as you can see, Eddie was only there for a year and a half. So even though Eddie's a great player, he was a great Hornet for that season and a half, I just can't keep him on the all-time roster when there's a couple other guys that spent longer parts of their careers with Charlotte. So hopefully you agree with me on that deletion. So let's move to the starting lineup and let's see who I added. All right, so this one's pretty easy and I'm not really sure why he's not included on the team to begin with, but that is Chris Paul. Chris Paul was on the Hornets, you know, when they played in New Orleans. In Oklahoma City for the brief period they played for oh 
was he with Oklahoma City Hornets? I don't know. Well, long story short, he was with the Hornets. So, definitely you need him as your starting point guard, in my opinion. So, your starting shooting guard, you could either go with Steph Curry or Kendall Gill. I chose to go with Kendall Gill. Kendall Gill is more of a inside slash type player, where Steph Curry is more of a perimeter. Steph Curry, excuse me. <laughs> Del Curry. I didn't mean to say Steph Curry. I meant to say Del Curry. And so I'll correct myself here. But Del Curry is more of a perimeter player, where Kendall Gill's more of one of those uh, drive to the basket type players. And the only reason I did that is because you already have this guy on your perimeter lighting it up with threes. You don't really need two guys doing that at the same time, in my opinion. I'd rather have Del Curry coming off the bench as my three point specialist as opposed to Glenn Rice. So, starting power forward, Grandma Ma himself, Larry Johnson, the face of the franchise very early on in his career before he moved on to different teams. Alonzo Mourning, again, the face of the franchise for many years before he moved on to the Miami Heat. And Kimba Walker, Kimba Walker, probably the most recent player on this roster, not, not counting Chris Paul, but that is a modern day Charlotte Hornet as the backup point guard. And here's the first guy that I added to the roster, and that is Jamal Mashburn. Um, I had a debate on adding three small forwards to this team. One I decided not to, and the other two I did add, and I'm going to get to that person in a second. But Jamal Mashburn had some very, very good years with Charlotte, and I think he'd be a very solid backup small forward to come off the bench for Glenn Rice. Del Curry, as we talked about, I misspoke and called him uh, Steph earlier, but you could swap Del Curry out with Kendall Gill if you prefer to have a three-point contest during the game, I suppose, with Curry and Rice on the floor at the same time. This is the next small forward that I added to the list, Kelly Trapaka, and Kelly Trapaka or Trapuka, however you want to say it, he he was on the expansion Charlotte Hornets. He was kind of their big star when they first came into the league. He had some very successful seasons with Detroit, as I'll show you. He was with Detroit and had some very, very good years with Detroit after being drafted out of Notre Dame. And then he was taken in an expansion draft that first year the Hornets came into existence. And as you can see, he was their guy averaging 22 points a game. He was only there for a few seasons, you know, it was towards the end of his career, but that first year he was in Charlotte, this this was their go-to guy. So I decided not to add Peja Stojakovic to this team, only because you can't have four small forwards that kind of all do the same thing, and he gets into the honorable mentions for sure. Now the backup power forward, Derek Coleman. Derek Coleman came there after he had some success with the Nets. He spent about three seasons there, 13, 16 a game, pulled down about eight rebounds a game. Very good, solid backup coming off the bench. However, I wouldn't put him at your power forward in the starting lineup over LJ. As I mentioned before, Vlade Divac, this is the first time he was represented on this game as a Charlotte Hornet. He came over in the Kobe Bryant trade for the rights to Kobe Bryant to the Lakers. After Devox spent a couple seasons with Charlotte, he would then move on to the Kings, where he would find even more success and eventually waning himself as a Hall of Fame center. This is another guy that was omitted off the game this year due to his retirement, and that is David West. David West played some very good seasons with the Charlotte Hornets. New Orleans Hornets, I believe, too, before moving on to the Indiana Pacers and then later moving on to multiple teams towards the end of his career. But David West, just like Derek Coleman, similar type of players, very good. will get you 13, 15 points a game, 10 rebounds on any given night. So to round out the roster, you got to have Muggsy on there. I don't, I don't see how you can not have an all-time Charlotte Hornets team without the big little warrior himself, Muggsy Bogues. He doesn't get a lot of playing minutes on this team as being Chris Paul's backup. However, and not Chris Paul's backup, but Kimba Walker's backup as well. But very good player, very long time for the Charlotte Hornets. One of the toughest guys you'll ever see to play the game of basketball. 
With that being said, the reserve guys I just left as Baron Davis and P.J. Brown. P.J. Brown came to Charlotte after having some success in Miami and I want to say maybe New Jersey before that. Uh, this was towards the end of his career. Not right at the end of his career, but midpoint of his career would be a better way to put it. And he's just a good reserve big guy to have on the bench. The other one I thought about having on there was Tyson Chandler. Similar type of player. Tyson Chandler still going, or at least he was before the virus shortened season. And instead of P.J. Brown, maybe you could go with Tyson Chandler. Another one that I threw around with this team in the honorable mentions was Rex Chapman. Rex Chapman was a very good player for the Hornets back in their early years as well. So, who coaches this team? Alan Bristow. And you're like, whoa, there's a name I haven't heard in a long time. Well, Alan Bristow was a former player, but he also was the coach of the Hornets during the LJ Graham all Kendall Gill, Alonzo Mourning years. Probably to this point has the most success in Charlotte Hornets history. So I just go with Alan Bristow. Hopefully somebody will rise out of the ranks and uh, maybe outdo Alan Bristow. But as of right now, I think Alan Bristow is the best choice for the all-time coach of this team. So hopefully you agree with my subtractions and additions. There's a lot of marginal players that could very easily be replaced. You know, David Wesley like that I removed. And again, I want to emphasize that I did not include Charlotte Bobcats on this roster because I'm going to probably segregate them for a completely separate roster of just Charlotte Bobcats. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Look forward to your comments below.